What is the most useful therapy to reduce stone formation? Allopurinol, benzoflumethiazide, dietary calcium destruction, penicillamine, potassium citrate. A 45-year-old man had recurrent nephrolithiasis. Renal function tests and serum calcium measurements were normal. 24-hour urinary calcium, 8.8 millimoles. 24-hour urinary urate, 3. 24-hour urinary oxalate, 0.2. 24-hour urinary citrate, 0.2. What is the most useful therapy to reduce stone formation? This patient has recurrent nephrolithiasis associated with normal renal function test and normal serum calcium measurement. 24-hour urinary calcium level is mildly elevated, indicating mild hypercalciuria. 24-hour urinary urate and 24-hour urinary oxalate levels are normal. 24-hour urinary citrate level is reduced, indicating hypocitrate urea. Hypocitrate urea, low urinary citrate, and hypercalciuria, elevated urinary calcium, are the most prevalent risk factors in kidney stone formers, in short, KSF. In a patient with recurrent nephrolithiasis, hypercalciuria may be associated with hypocitrate urea or normocitrate urea or hypercitrate urea. Citrate is pathogenetically important in prevention of stone formation because it inhibits the crystallization of stone forming calcium salt and because its level in urine is low in many patients with nephrolithiasis. Citrate inhibits the formation and growth of the calcium crystals. So citrate plays a complex role in stone prevention acting both by lowering urinary calcium excretion and inhibiting crystal stone nucleation. Use of the potassium salt is preferred since sodium citrate supplementation will lead to increased calciuria. So we should go with the potassium citrate. Potassium citrate is a strong inhibitor of crystallization and potassium citrate supplementation has been shown to significantly increase urinary citrate excretion and decrease stone recurrence rates in hypocitrate uric and normocitrate uric KSF. Citrate is administered orally, metabolized to bicarbonate in the liver, absorbed by the small intestine, and filtered into urine. This urinary citrate forms soluble complex with calcium ion, leading to reduction in the concentration of free calcium ion, thereby preventing the calcium supersaturation. In addition, citrate supplementation increases urinary pH, which in turn further promotes urinary citrate excretion and prevents uric acid, calcium oxalate, and cysteine stone formation. So, potassium citrate is the default first line choice as an alkalinizing agent for the reduction of stone formation in a patient with recurrent nephrolithiasis associated with mild hypercalciuria plus normocalcemia plus hypocitrate urea. Thiazide diuretics are used as the first line choice in the treatment of nephrolithiasis associated with significant hypercalciuria plus normocitrate urea or hypercitrate urea with or without hypocalcemia. Thiazide diuretics decrease urinary calcium excretion by increasing calcium reabsorption in the early part of the distal convoluted tubule of the kidney. This can ultimately help reduce the formation of calcium containing stones, particularly in patients with idiopathic hypercalciuria. Hydrochlorothiazide is the agent most commonly used, but other thiazide or thiazide type diuretics can be administered, including trichloromethiazide and chlorthalidone. 
allopurinols the most useful agent in the management of nephrolithiasis associated with hyperuricemia elevated serum uric acid penicillin is a chelating agent recommended for the removal of excess copper in patient with wilson's disease Penicillin also causes reduction of excess cysteine excretion making it suitable for the management of cystinuria or cystinuric stone. Cystinuria is the commonest inborn error of amino acid transport. Excessive urinary arginine excretion is a feature of cystinuria. So elevated urinary arginine excretion is highly suggestive of cystinuria. Cystinuria is characterized by recurrent cystine urolithiasis. Cystinuria usually presents with recurrent nephrolithiasis in the form of cystine stones, which are often bilateral, multiple, and can form staghorns. Cystinuria follows autosomal recessive pattern of inheritance. Management of cystinuria, alkalinization along with high fluid intake, usually greater than 4 liter per 24 hours, followed by D penicillin. Dietary calcium restriction is generally not recommended as the first line therapy for the reduction of stone formation in a patient with nephrolithiasis, especially when they have the normal calcemia, like the patient in this scenario due to the paradoxical effect. Restriction of dietary calcium intake can actually increase the risk of kidney stone formation. When dietary calcium is insufficient, the intestine increases absorption of oxalate, which can then be excreted in the urine and contribute to the oxalate stone formation. And the primary pathophysiology in recurrent nephrolithiasis is often related to urinary excretion rather than dietary intake. So whenever we are discussing dietary calcium intake for the prevention of renal stone, it's important to maintain an adequate intake of calcium rather than restriction. The recommended daily calcium intake for most adults usually ranges from 1000 mg to 1200 mg. There may be slight variation depending on age and sex of the patient. Dietary calcium restriction is the default first-line choice for the management of idiopathic hypercalciuria without nephrolithiasis, which can be followed by potassium citrate, followed by thiazide diuretics. Our scenario is a different entity not related to idiopathic hypercalciuria. Idiopathic hypercalciuria is often familial, the most common cause being increased GI absorption of calcium. The most common stone are calcium oxalate stones. A combination of treatments is usually required in idiopathic hypercalciuria to reduce the chance of stone formation, including dietary calcium restriction and pharmacological management. So, for the management of idiopathic hypercalciuria, the default first-line choice should be the lifestyle modification in the form of dietary calcium restriction followed by pharmacological management, usually starting with potassium citrate followed by thiazide diuretics. Patients with idiopathic hypercalciuria should aim for a daily urinary output in excess of 2000 ml. Potassium citrate chelates calcium. Thiazide diuretics reduce renal tubular calcium excretion and therefore can prevent calcium stone formation.
Both thiazide diuretics and potassium citrate can be used to reduce urinary excretion of calcium. Potassium citrate is generally preferred as it has fewer side effects and is therefore better tolerated. So let me make it more simplified for you. Recurrent uric acid stones associated with hyperuricemia go for allopurinol. Cystinuria or cystinuric stone go for penicillamine. Idiopathic hypercalciuria without nephrolithiasis. Default first line choice will be dietary calcium restriction followed by potassium citrate followed by bendrofluoromethiazide. Now listen to this very carefully and give the highest degree of attention. Recurrent nephrolithiasis plus significant hypercalciuria plus normocitrate urea or hypercitrate urea plus hypocalcemia. The default first line choice would be thiazide diuretics followed by potassium citrate. Alternatively, Recurrent nephrolithiasis plus mild hypercalciuria plus hypocitrate urea plus normocalcemia. The default first line choice would be potassium citrate followed by thiazide diuretics. Since this patient has presented with recurrent nephrolithiasis associated with mild hypercalciuria, hypocitrate urea, and normocalcemia. So the most useful therapy to reduce stone formation or the default first line choice of treatment would be potassium citrate. Bendrofluoromethiazide can be used in the second step on the top of potassium citrate provided citrate supplementation is ineffective. The 24-hour urinary calcium is marginally elevated and is not an indication for thiazide diuretic therapy. Urinary citrate reduces urinary supersaturation of calcium salts by forming soluble complexes with calcium ions and by inhibiting crystal growth and aggregation. Hence the use of potassium citrate in recurrent stone formation. There are no data to warrant the use of allopurinol or penicillamine. Low calcium diets lead to increased oxalate absorption production, which is counterproductive. So let me repeat the golden formula again for the perfect memorization. Recurrent nephrolithiasis plus significant hypercalciuria plus normocitrate urea or hypercitrate urea plus hypocalcemia. Default first line choice is thiazide diuretics followed by potassium citrate. Alternatively, recurrent nephrolithiasis plus mild hypercalciuria plus hypocitrate urea plus normocalcemia. The most suitable therapy for the reduction of stone formation or the default first line choice would be potassium citrate followed by thiazide diuretics. Predominant hypercalciuria, thiazide diuretics, hypocitrate urea, potassium citrate. Idiopathic hypercalciuria without nephrolithiasis. Initial intervention would be lifestyle modification with dietary calcium restriction followed by pharmacological intervention starting with potassium citrate followed by thiazide diuretics. Music